Hey guys, welcome to my Slime Isekai Memories video. Today we're going to talk about this new banner that just came out of nowhere, just a few hours before reset. This banner gives us 5 star Diablo, a dark DPS, and Secretary Xion, a protector version of Xion. Along with it also comes of an event that if you use these two characters, you'll get a boost in event currency. So that alone gives us some sort of reason to pull on this banner. But is this banner actually worth pulling? Let's take a look. So first let's take a look at Diablo. Diablo is a 5 star dark element DPS. He has a single target dark physical attack, which is great right now. In the current meta of the game, Single target attack is always better than AoE attack simply because all the difficult stages are boss fight. And right now the only end game sort of raid or end game material that we have is a single target boss fight. So this alone makes Diablo a decent unit. His first skill increases attack by 20% but just himself and Decreases dark resistance of all targets by 10%. This is amazing. He is sort of like a dark version of Gazel, where Gazel only buffs himself. Diablo buffs his own attack and decreases all enemies' dark resistance. So, what it means is if you have other dark element DPSs on your team and they're attacking as well, they will also do increased damage to your enemies. Second skill is um, Soul Jingyun skill, but instead of like the usual we change two into two, you only get to change one. But it also increases the Divine Protection gauges by 5%. So not too crazy, but not too bad either. Looking at the character traits, basically the character traits are when you awaken the unit itself, it will give it sort of like a passive ability. And you get one at the first awaken and the third one. So for Diablo is when you unleash a six combo attack with Divine Protection, it decreases all targets attack by 5% for the next turn. Usually the passive is not a huge consideration when you decide when you're deciding on what units to use. As right now we are very limited pool of units right now so we mostly look at what sort of attack the ultimate is and what sort of abilities the units have and just right now Diablo is looking pretty good next up we're looking at Secretary Xion she gives buffs to mainly dark and secondary fire which is actually the same as Disaster Orc so surprisingly we thought that there might be new um, 5 star protectors that will give us different variations of combinations but apparently we will be getting the same format so all the dark ones are still dark and fire the protection skill of Xion is you change the souls of skills into souls of protection so while this is almost the same as Chaos Orc. Chaos Orc actually changes the soul of skills into secrets. So meaning the Disaster Orc will give you more and more ultimates while Xion will give us more and more Divine Protection casts. But every time you cast Secretary Xion you'll also get 15% to all your allies secret skill gauge. The character traits, again, these only activates when you have them awakened the first time and the third time. So when three fang guards have 75% or more HP, it decreases all targets defense by 4% at the start of the turn. This is actually a pretty good one because when your team has 75% or more HP, every turn you will decrease your enemy's defense by 4% and 6% at awakened 3. 
So compared to Disaster Orc, where the Orc's passive is if your enemy has defense up, then you decrease their pierce resistance. So in this case, Xion's passive actually is easier to enable compared to the Orcs where only specific encounters where the enemies will have a defense up. This one will almost always activate in all the fights at the beginning stages. So all in all, another great unit. So not only does this update gives us a new banner with two new units, It also comes with an event that will give us these items called Octogram Embols. So Octogram Embols are event currency that you earn by doing the new event, Nation of Monsters, Diabolic Secretaries. And your reward would be ta -da, a new 5 star space milim. Yes, as if we don't have enough milims already. So let's take a look at this sort of event character. Unlike other event character, unlike other games, where event characters are usually one rarity below. For example, if the highest rarity is five star, usually the events give us four star. This game is actually generous enough to give us a five star character. So let's take a look at our new space milim. So first, you can see that the, her dragon slash is now a single target attack. This is a huge improvement over the other two variants where her attacks are AOEs. Her first skill buffs her own pierce rate and her own pierce power. Even though she doesn't give like a whole AOE buff anymore like her wind variant, this is still a good skill to have especially when she will be the DPS herself with the single target attack. And then, on the second skill, she has a all ally crit rate 30% buff and a decrease a single target guard power by 25%. Team buffs are always welcome, especially if it comes with a single target debuff as well. In practice though, we'll have to see what is the actual cost of the second skill. If it's low enough, we could cast both skills together and then Space Millen will do a lot of damage. All in all, great character, especially for an event character. Also, this is a very much needed character for the space element as the space element currently really needs a single target DPS. Now, how would they fit into the whole tier list? Let's find out. Okay, so here is the tier list for the current meta and I've added the three new units. So this tier list is mostly based on the third iteration of the tier list published in the JP websites. So first, we have the seven protectors. Even though in most tier lists, all seven protectors are listed all as S tiers, I personally believe that some are still better than the other. So I played three different accounts at the same time all to population 6,000 and clearing chapter 10. Just experimenting with units. I could s safely tell you that certain comms and certain elements right now are stronger than the other. So first we have the S plus tier. Up here we have Wind Dragon, Disaster Orc, and Ifrit. They are all in S plus tier instead of S tier is because of their active skill is just so much stronger than the other four. If you look at their skill, the Wind Dragon increases the limit of the skill cost, increases your soul of combo damage, and it increases your skill point by 30. So even if you're using a team that's not Wind Element, just the protection skill alone is a massive boost to your team. It increases damage, lets you use skills more often, just crazy effective. And then if you look at Orc Disaster, he also increases the skill limit, 
it changes the soul soul skills and sorry he changes the soul skills into soul secrets meaning you could act you could cast more ultimates all the time and it also increases skill points as well even though not as much as the wind drag skill ch uh, soul changes are always welcome so again very strong also, Orc Disaster is Dark Element, so there's no element right now that he will deal reduced damage to. Next we have Ifrit. Ifrit increases all allies fire attack by 15% for 2 turns. And it increases your team's secret gauge by 30%. So again, amazing at protection skills. Increases the skill gauge and increases your fire team's damage by 15% for 2 turns. All the other protectors, even though they're not as, I would say, not as OP, they're still really great to have as this game is all about having a diverse roster of units. So where would our new Xion fits in? Right now, as the current meta, I would put her into S+, right next to Disaster Orc as well, because they practically have the same skill set. Now let's take a look at our battle units. First, let's look at S tier. And yes, I have two S tier. One is for protection units and one is for battle units, just to make it slightly clearer. So first, we have our best healer. Non-negotiable, S tier. Our best healer right now. As opposed to all the other healers in the game that are healing your team by 15%, Trini heals for 25%. That's almost double so definitely s tier no there's zero debates right there and then we have the water protagonists our water protagonist is now s tier because first he heals even though it's only 15% but he's the only unit in the game that can reduce the opponent's secret gauge. Meaning when you see the boss having a shiny little bar telling you that he's going to cast his ultimate on you, you can cast his skills and boom, no more ulti for one more turn. Next up for supports, we have everybody's favorite burst damage. We have Win Millim. Wind Millum is definitely S tier and one of the most popular units right now because she gives a huge buff to your team's damage. And when I mean huge, I mean like 60% huge. The skill reads, increase your soul of combos damage by 60%. Honestly, I feel like this is just horribly translated. I usually actually play in the Chinese version of the game because I actually read the whole anime novel in like Chinese. And in the Chinese version, it just translates really well saying Soul of Combos is actually just the ultimate of the unit. So this skill makes for a really good combo where when you charged up your ultimate, you could just put on all the buffs and then increase it by 60% and then just smash your opponents to bits. Meanwhile, it also increases her own critical damage by 20%, you know? Two turns. Not bad. So, moving on, we're gonna move to all the DPSs. And by DPSs, I mean single target DPSs. So, instead of going them one by one, I'm gonna drag all of the ST single target right now. So these four units have a single target ultimate attack. Beretta and Jisu have also on their, on their ability a soul skill change. So both of them will change their souls to like a soul of secret. So it makes it easier for your team to pull off combo attacks. Gazel is one of the most self-sustained DPS. He has, um, on his first skill, 
increased owns attack by 20% and increased critical strike. So basically when you're ready to just hit it off with your ultimate, you cast his first skill and it will give a massive boost to your damage. And then we have Hakuro. Hakuro is amazing because first he also does single target ultimate damage, but he also has an AOE defense break. His first skill decreases all enemies defense by 25% while increase your whole team's critical strike rate by 30%. Just that alone gives him S tier, both as a support and as a DPS. Now, while we're on the subject of single target DPS, the new Diablo, as I mentioned earlier, is basically just a dark version of Gazel. They both have a self self buff, one turn attack increase 20%, so he will also be in the S tier, same as Gazel. And then we have the new Space Milum. Space Milum, for now, I'll put her into S tier, even though her abilities aren't really super amazing right now, but she's the only space single target ultimate attacker right now. So if anyone is looking to build a space team, she is a must to put on the team. Without her, your team will just be dealing wet noodle AOE attack to bosses. Now what's left here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them all in B tier, I would just put them all in A tier. Why wouldn't I put certain units into B tier? As I mentioned earlier, right now our roster is very limited. And this game basically forces us to build monotone teams. And right now we most uh, and right now most elements doesn't even have three five star in their roster for battle units. So I'm just gonna put all of them in A tier right now. Even though there are units, for example, a unit like him, he also he also has a single target attack for his ultimate. His other skills are really lacklusters. So it's really hard to put him in S tier right now. And then there are units like Space Remu, which is all the hots right at first when the first tier came out. Because when we looked at his skills, he has a whole... Sorry, he has an attack buff for your whole team for 35% and then a defense buff for your whole team. However, in reality, when we actually use him, the skill cost is just so high that it's so hard to combine both him and Windmillum's skill together. So if we have to choose, i probably just choose Windmillum's skills. So that is why it's so hard to give the um, space protagonist an S tier. For all the other characters on the A tier list, they're A because they're actually really usable. So if you're building, say for example, a space team, you will still put 5 star space Ranga in your team. They're only in the A tier and not S because all of them suffers from not having a single target attack ultimate. But if you were to build a monotone team, you would almost always include them in their respective elements anyway. So in conclusion, if you're still re-rolling or trying to form the best team right now, simply pick from the S tier and S plus tier protectors, and then just pick one of the S tier respective element battle units, and then you can safely start your game. The only exception is Trini the Earth Healer, she will fit into almost any team comp, even if the protector doesn't cover her element. The same goes for the water element Rirumu. So I'm gonna stop the video here, I don't want to drag this on for too long. Thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care.